everyone, Uncle Jesse here. Sitting next to me is the Elgu Neptune 2S, and it's arguably one of my favorite FDM 3D printers. I own a whole fleet of them at this point in order to fulfill all the different Etsy orders that I need to produce, and it's just the perfect combination of pricing for the unit as well as print quality that you're going to be able to get off of the machine. And today, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Elgu Neptune 3. The Neptune 3 is the latest iteration in the series of the Neptune printers, and it's got a few new things baked into it that I'm really excited to see. Elugu has directly listened to some of the feedback by the community and installed things like auto bed leveling here on the printer. There's no more knobs on this thing, and it makes the process of getting your prints up and running so much easier. They've also added belt tensioners on the X and Y axis so that you don't have to run off and print those, which is a great addition, as well as they've moved, the much requested, moved the control screen for that was sitting underneath the bed. That was kind of a pain to get to, especially mid print to modify anything. It's now a detachable control unit here that you can use and plug in <laughs> via like a phone cord. Some of you might not even know what a phone cord is. <laughs> from a landline. Yeah, so this will allow you to basically control your 3D printer and uh, do all the fun things that you can do with it. It also has a larger build volume. The X and Y is the exact same as the standard Neptune 2 and Neptune 2S of 220 by 220, but now the Z axis is 280 millimeters high. Another hotly requested feature was to have dual fans added to the printer, and they've added that here to the hot end, which will end up providing you with some better quality prints. Thanks to the included TMC drives on the printer, which is going to provide an overall quieter printing experience compared to the previous iterations of the machines. And it's still sporting the textured magnetic PEI sheet that you can use for the print bed, as well as there's a smooth side if you wanted to use that as well when you're printing. They've also updated the filament runout sensor. I'm now having a lot less issues when it comes to feeding filament into the printer, as well as it not only will detect if you've run out of filament, but it will also potentially alert you if there is a clog with the machine, which is crazy cool to me. Now, I don't entirely know how this works because I have not run into a filament clog yet on the machine, but I believe how it's gonna work is there is a sensor in here and it's gonna detect if the filament is not passing through the sensor. And if that occurs, it's going to pause the print so that it's not gonna to continue to print mid air, just nothingness like I've seen on a lot of other printers. Now, if that works properly, that's gonna be a huge game changer when it comes to printing larger projects. And as I mentioned before, there's no more knobs on the bottom of the bed because there's auto bed leveling included with this and it's using that by detecting the nozzle touching the bed across 16 different points on the print bed. You basically do that calibration one time when you get your printer set up, put a piece of paper in and make sure that the Z offset is set correctly and then you're off and going. And by the way, when it comes to the actual assembly process, this was even simpler than it was to assemble the Neptune 2 and Neptune 2S. A lot of the wires are already pre-assembled and attached and it was just, I think, two or three cables and a few screws that I had to bolt in to get this thing up and running. Also, I've had zero issues with frame wobble on the new Neptune 3. Oh, and by the way, there's a handle on top of the printer, which is convenient if you want to move this thing around a lot. So the very first thing I went off and printed is a practical print here for the Neptune series of printers. And it's just a tool holder that goes on top of the frame of the print bed. I'll have links down below to basically all the files that I'm showing off in today's video. But if you have a bed slinger style printer, I highly recommend one of these because it just conveniently captures and holds all of the tools so that you don't end up losing them because inevitably you need some of those to do some maintenance on your printers. And then one often printed this Stranger Things Vecna bust by Freedom sculpts here on the Neptune 3 and it looks pretty dang rad in this Matter Hackers color shifting filament. This is their Quantum PLA and I printed this all at 0.2 millimeter layer height here and I did run into a small issue with a shift right in those little neck vein areas and I think what ended up happening there is that I needed some supports on those veins and I just missed that in the slicing process. Now if you've been on Reddit or TikTok over the last week or so, you've probably seen this crazy Spider-Man bust and so I had to attempt to print this here on the Neptune 3 
I ended up printing this at 0.28 millimeter layer height here and the print quality looks okay. I probably should have slowed it down a bit. There's still a little bit of faint stringing there and that just might be due to me not having this filament completely dialed in with the settings here. It's a silk filament so it can tend to be a little bit more stringy but overall it's going to be a great display piece and my kids are already fighting over who's going to get this. I also printed this with zero supports and it's a really fun print to run off and make. Uh, you might want to consider adding a few supports along the base of the print because some of those overhangs are really steep. I've also been adding some plants to the studio and needed a way to properly water them so I went off and 3D printed a watering can. Zero supports and printed extremely clean. Unfortunately it's just not entirely watertight so what I think I'm going to end up doing is using a little bit of flex seal on the inside to coat that so it will prevent any of the water from leaking out of the bottom area of the print. And I believe this was printed at 0.28 millimeter layer height as well. And again, no supports needed for it. And it's just a beautiful design and would highly recommend trying to print one of these for yourself. And speaking of plants for the studio, I ended up taking a skull that I designed in Nomad Sculpt, slicing the top off and hollowing it out so that I could turn it into a hanging planter. So I printed the skull here on the Neptune 3 and then added a succulent to it and now have it hanging in the front of my studio. And then it was time to print something fun and practical. This is a Wacom dinosaur pen holder that I'm using a Sharpie in place of a Wacom pen, but printed this here at point two millimeter layer height and is designed by Digi Sculpts and is available over on CG Trader. Also has a larger version of this in a statue form. That's not a pen holder, but this is just a really cool design. Something that I wanted to print with some supports and see how it would work here on the Neptune 3 to show that off as an example. And the teeth look like they could use a little bit of cleaning up, but overall not bad for an FDM 3D printer with all of this detail. And finally, I printed this ornate Charizard skull by Chaos Cortec in this crazy vibrant rainbow silk PLA. And this just looks beautiful. This is a prime example of why I love the Neptune series of printers. It's just the print quality on this looks stunning at 0.2 millimeter layer height, 60 millimeters per second. I believe this was an 8% infill, five top layers, three bottom and two walls. And it just looks fantastic. And I'm loving the prints that I'm getting off of the Neptune 3. My expectations have been very high for this machine and so far it is delivering. However, there are a few things that I wanted to call out. And as a reminder, this is not a review video because it is being sponsored by Elgu, but I wanted to provide this constructive feedback so that you are aware as well as the folks over at Elgu. The first being that the touchscreen interface is really smooth and easy to work with. However, we've lost the ability to display an image of the file that we're about to print, which I loved having on the Neptune 2 and the Neptune 2S. And there's even a little box area where it's displaying the Elegoo logo that would be the perfect location display that actual image of the file that we're about to 3D print. The next is that the auto bed leveling for me worked really well and I was able to set the Z offset really easily and for the most part have had no issues. However, I would love, absolutely love to be able to modify the Z offset mid print. Quick update, while editing this video and further printing, I did find the option to adjust the Z offset. You just need to, while you're printing, come into settings. Then here at the very bottom is Z offset. And then you can just adjust your offset as needed. And where's the Wi-Fi? Man, I was really hoping that Wi-Fi would be baked into this, but it's not. And it's not the end of the world, especially since they're trying to keep the price point really low on this. And I'm honestly amazed that it's priced at a retail of 220 over on Elegoo site. And it's even on sale right now as part of their pre-sale program for $210. Not available over on Amazon just yet, but as soon as it is, I'll have some affiliate links down below in the video where you can find that. But the other thing that I was hoping to see with this, we got a tall build volume, which was, thank you, thank you. Really happy about that because that means I can print some larger replica props or masks here on this, not a full size helmet, but I would love to see a slightly larger Neptune printer that I could print a full helmet on. 
One other really minor one that I love that they've addressed here on the Neptune 3 that was an issue on the Neptune 2 and the 2S is that there wasn't a great preheat option. Now you can default that to PLA or ABS and you can define what the actual default print temperatures are. And for me, I like to have that defaulted to 220 for the extruder and 60 for the bed. And as I mentioned previously, Elgu is the sponsor of today's video. So if you're interested in more information on the Neptune 3, which I'm just absolutely loving and now wanting to that have a new fleet of Neptune printers here in my studio. Elugu just also recently announced as part of their pre-sale the Elugu Mars 3 Pro as well as the Elugu Saturn 2. Oh, and by the way, the Neptune 3 is gonna be starting to ship out to people that have pre-ordered it in July and August. And I also wanna say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support. I'm in the process of modifying my Neptune slicer profiles in Simplify 3D and migrating those over to Prusa Slicer. So once those are ready, I'll be sharing those with my Patreon supporters. So if you're in the market for a new FDM 3D printer and you're wondering if the Neptune 3 would be a right fit for you, I would say, yeah, jump in there for the price and for the print quality that I'm getting out of this machine, it is a fantastic unit. And I'm so far very impressed with the results that I've been getting off of this printer. And again, I'll have links down below to all of the files that I've shown off in today's video and let me know what you'd like to see me print here on the Neptune 3 because I'm sure you're gonna be seeing it here in the future in some upcoming project builds. Hey, thanks again for watching. Well, I'll see you next time. Bye now.